Hey YouTube, how's it going? I'm back and I'm going to be doing another Koo Model 6 scale action figure review today. This time I'm doing the Koo Model uh, Viking. Now, this comes from the Double Pack, which has the Viking Vanquisher and the Viking Warlord. I think this one is the Warlord. I'm not sure. I actually no longer have the other one. Um... They were very similar figures, and I was running low on space in the collection, per usual, and I uh, let him go. But I kept this version, and I am going to do a review of it for you now. So first things first, I'm going to set down my camera, get him off of the rotating display base, and go over what he comes with um this guy is pretty fully loaded and unlike the other one that came with some huge axes uh, i thought the accessories this guy came with weren't too uh fantastical so as to not be realistic in display um amongst some other uh, more realistic historical action figures. The axes on the other one were just these big, massive fantasy axes. And, you know, it just kind of bugged me a little tiny bit um, to have them on display with other pieces. So, anyways, as you can see right here, let's start off. He comes with his Viking sword, which is really cool. It's inscribed with some runes there. Um, hands grip it just fine, which is awesome. And there we go. And he also comes with this little buckler. Um, it's a little bit large to be a buckler, but they call it a buckler, a Viking buckler in the package. So we'll just go with that easily. He just grips it with one hand underneath there. Holds it just fine, and that is actually, I believe, an exclusive accessory to the two-pack set. Um, normally, he would come with this shield, which is much, much bigger. Uh, it does look very cool, though. I love the serpent uh, design on the front of it. Some weathering on there. You know, it's just a big plastic piece, but whatever. He would hold it the same way as the buckler, but it can also be strapped across his back if you want to do that. Um, and speaking of exclusive accessories, just in case the helmet that normally comes with him wasn't doing it for you, he also comes with this alternate horned helmet, which does look absolutely badass. Uh, there's this little swooshy ponytail thing sticking off the back, I don't know. Uh, but that's a cool helmet, although the one he normally comes with is certainly no slouch. And I... I may actually be tempted to display him with the exclusive helmet, but it does not have the uh, gold or brass accents on it, which I really like. I think it's more eye-catching as opposed to the monochrome second helmet, but let's take that off there. There's the head sculpt underneath. It's definitely one of the better... Uh, Western looking head sculpts that Koo Model has done. It's not overly stylized or cartoony. He just looks like a big badass Viking with a super huge beard. And this one comes with that little mohawk braid thing. Um, the beard itself looks great. It hangs really nicely. There you go. It doesn't get in the way. It's just there, rooted beard, looking good. Um, Let's pop that other helmet on real quick so you can see what that looks like. There we go. All right, it's pretty neat. Looks good. I'm not going to muss with it. Oh, the whole head came off. <laughs> All right, get that back on there. I had it sitting on the ball pretty loosely, so that one was entirely my fault. Um, one moment, I'm going to set my phone down. It's easier to do all this action figure stuff with two hands. There, is it on? Nope. There, now it's on. Okay. So, uh, not moving on from the helmets yet. I wanted to go over one thing. 
um, that I do really like about how they constructed it. If you can see, move this light a little bit there. If you can see inside of that helmet, there's a nice soft little pad so that it doesn't rub on the head sculpt and damage the paint, which is very appreciated. Thank you for that cool model. All right, let's slide that back on there. Boom. Okay. All right, so now let's get into the outfit. And this is another area of this guy that I absolutely love. He has a great, great outfit um, with many layers. So lower his arms here and, oh, actually I lied. We can't get into the outfit because I'm certainly not done with the accessories. Sorry about that. So let's just go along his belt line here. He also comes with this Viking ax, which just kind of loops in there. Easy peasy. Um, looks good. Bearded ax. He can hold it. It is die cast metal, just like the sword. It is a nice and heavy accessory. And all of his accessories can be placed on the belt, uh, stored on him in some way, which I absolutely love, because I like to deck my figures out in a lot of accessories. So now we go back here. He has uh, this little drinking receptacle, which could be full of water or mead, and I like it. It has a little logo right there. The lid actually pops off, which I think is super cool. That's a unique little accessory. And then when he's done having a swig, you can just clip that right back onto the belt. If I could do it on camera, that would be fabulous. Maybe I can't do it on camera. That's fine. We'll take this. We'll set this down for a moment. Um, he also comes with this horn, which again can either be used for him to blow into or to drink from. It could be a drinking horn if you like that idea. Um, it hooks onto the belt also with a little clasp or you can just slide it out of the leather. Looks great. Another cool accessory and a win from Ku model. Put that back and he has a little pouch there. Moving him around again. There we go. Raise that arm. He has another little pouch right underneath here. Uh, he takes a minute or so to set up with the belts and the accessories, but really not as severe <laughs> or challenging as most of what Ku model does. Their samurais in particular and their knights. Um, much less hassle setting this guy up. So from the top, let's look at that outfit. Everything is weathered and appropriately so. Um, the weathering looks great. These shoulder pads, which are the only real piece of armor that he has on, are connected by this little interlocking belt system which ties up in the back. All die cast metal, all weathered and looking good. Um, the fur underneath them is attached to the shoulder pad, so that's going to stay in place without much of a hassle, which is a good thing. Um, underneath that, he has a padded gambeson, which also the stitching on that looks good. It looks puffy. It looks padded like a padded gambeson should be. Um, then he has this staunch leather belt, which... Uh, it feels like it might be real leather. Maybe it's pleather. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not worried about it flaking over time, which is something that us collectors have to worry about. And it's got these metal studs in there uh, that gives it a little bit more texture, makes it look awesome, and also helps hold those belts in place once you tie them on so that they're not sliding around everywhere. Um, the other layer, he has this little fur skin which complements the fur up there quite well, I think. It looks good. I imagine Vikings in the north, it's probably a bit cold, especially out on sea all the time. So that looks awesome. And he has a layer of pants. Great. He has these boots, which are simple. They are cut right there, so you get all the range of motion you could want in the ankles. And they have a little bit of leather wrapped around them. 
um, which I find to be quite aesthetically pleasing. Finally, he has this little scrunchy material, um, which is meant to look like chainmail. If you pull it hard, you can see skin underneath, so I don't know how effective it would be at being chainmail, but it works for me, it works for this figure, and, you know, on display, you know, you're looking at it, you're maybe a foot away from the figure right now. It looks just fine. It, it works to the eye for chainmail. There's no real questions as to what that is supposed to be. So I'm going to set that down, and finally we'll go into articulation. And I'm really pleased with this figure. As you can see, the head is on a ball joint that connects up there into the neck. There is absolutely... Oh, you can't see. Huh. There we go. Let me adjust that. All right. Head's on a ball joint that connects up to the top here inside of that neck. Um, there's no lower neck articulation. That's just fine because a lot of it would probably get hindered eventually by rubbing against those shoulder plates there. Well, that's whatever, but the head can look up, down, you know, give a little attitude, rotate all around, do whatever you want with it. Pretty standard six scale head articulation. And now let's go into the arms. Um, even though he has these huge bulky shoulder pads, the arms will get out in front of him just fine. And even more so if you... Uh, learn how to use those straps a little bit. You can adjust them. Uh, you can also just slide it a bit off to the side to get more. He can get those above his head. So he's doing just fine. Arm articulation. Really not much to worry about with this guy. Now, they can go out without any assistance to about 90 degrees from the figure. What is this in the elbow? This is a single bend in the elbow. So you're getting just a smidge more than a 90 degree bend there, which isn't terrible. I don't know why they didn't use a double jointed body. Good model, I know you have them, but whatever. Uh, torso, like I said, the Gamson's big and crunchy and padded, but you can still get plenty of rock and crunch with it at least for the displays i'm gonna do legs come up 90 degrees to the body ankles rotate great because of that double boot cut thank you for that and a nice double jointed bend in the knee so now i'm gonna put that guy down all right and give you some closing thoughts the Ku Model Viking. I absolutely love this figure. I've had it in my display since uh, probably March of this year. Um, it's something that I always wanted. I didn't think it would sell out nearly as fast as it did, but it did sell out. I wasn't able to find it from any of my usual retailers, KG Hobby. I waited too long, so I'd kind of just given up on getting this guy or the full set into my collection. Luckily, uh, there's an awesome dude who I met who's in a couple of the groups on Facebook. And we were able to make a trade deal for it. So, that worked out well. And I got him into the collection. Once I got him in, I kicked myself because I should not have waited at all to get him in. Uh, this guy in particular, the other one, like I said, I could live without, but this guy was just an awesome pick figure from the front. Um, you know, the stylized Viking look, I loved it. He comes with alternate hands. You know, I don't think I really need to say that that's obvious at this point, but I'm just going to use the gripping ones because this is how he's pretty much on display. He looks ready for battle, ready for war, ready for a raid, um, I'm really into mythology and have been for a long time. And what sparked my interest in mythology was uh, Norse mythology. So I've been reading Bullfinch's Book of Mythology since I was a little boy. I think I have some readings here on my channel. And the Norse section in particular 
uh, really got me going when I was a kid. So, uh, yeah, I've just I've been a big fans of a big fan of Vikings ever since. Uh, dived into the Heim Skringla, uh, the Prose Edda, all that stuff, and their lore and their representation as just big mean badasses in pop culture is just great. Um, and I've been really enamored with it for some time. Even when I take a break and I, you know, go and get really into Medieval Knights or the Sengoku Jedi, all that stuff, you know, other histories, other cultures, I always come back to the Vikings because there's this great air of mystery around their culture. Um, and they're just so different from anything else that really was happening at their time or at any other time. It's hard to compare them to other groups of people. So, yeah, this is a great figure. If you get the chance to get it into your collection, let me know. And per usual, if you have any questions or comments or just want to, uh, you know, shoot it down in the comments below, I'd love to chat with some of my other collectors because uh, I'm still in quarantine here and it's a bit boring. So the opportunity to chat about figures here on YouTube is one that I would relish in. All right, guys. Thank you for checking out my video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and keep on collecting. Bye-bye.